Good morning, this is Joe Jacobson, back here with step-by-step -step blog building, another video tutorial. And today we are finally ready to start logging in to our WordPress dashboard. Okay, so we already talked about how to install WordPress. Now we're ready to go start working inside of what they call the administration area or the dashboard. So this first step is we're going to cover is how to basically get to that login screen and and then we'll talk about where you get your password and your username. Step two is once we get inside there we're going to tour the dashboard and all the pieces and components of it and because you'll be spending a lot of time in there basically that's where everything happens. Step number three is talk a little bit about your password and how to protect it. These days there's always password hackers out there for and hackers for everything so we want to be sure we have some um, ability here and I'll, I'll talk about that some aspect, actually some special plugins you can use to help protect and against those password hackers and then finally step four just talk a little bit about the importance of logging out of the dashboard each time you leave it okay so let's go take a look Actually, looks like I'm already logged in, so real quickly here, let me log out. I thought I was logged out already, so I'm going to go ahead and log out here. Here we go. So basically, the way that you're going to get to this login screen right here is, let me back up in here. You go up to the address uh, window up in here, the address bar. What you do is, I'm just working on a demo site here, demo do domain name dot info. So you'll type in your domain name forward slash W P like for WordPress and hyphen admin. Okay, that's the way you're going to do it. Of course, after you do it once, it'll it'll remember it. So do that. Hit the return key. And that will be, uh, come to your WordPress login screen. And now this is where you need to go to your email, pick up your username and your password. Now mine's in here because I've already done this before, but you, the first time you'll have to go ahead and type it in here. And you'll notice here I've got a couple of extra things here that yours probably doesn't have, and that's this little lock right here. And it says right down here, locked in. Or a login lockdown. It's a special plugin, which I'll tell you about here in a minute. Uh, once we get inside there, that kind of helps protect. What this does actually, I'll go ahead and mention this right now, and that is, if somebody's trying to guess your password right here, and they try it once, they try it twice, they try it three times. It's like three times, three strikes, you're out. And so then, what it does is it automatically locks this down so that they can't get back in. It just does it for a certain amount of time. I think it's an hour lockdown. And that means that they can't continue to try and hack in. And, but just remember that also applies to you. If you forget your password and you try it three times, you'll get locked out too for an hour. So be sure and remember your password. Keep it in a safe place. And then your username as well. And by the way, notice here, keep your eye on this. When I click on this login right here, uh, let me let me first mention here. You can put a a check mark in here, and that at least will remember. Uh, actually, I think it remembers the password only, which is kind of nice. You don't have to. If you work from the same computer each time, you don't have to continually type the password in. But also, now what I was going to say here a minute ago was keep your eye on this right here, this this password field here, because also on mine. And I, I, it seems to be working pretty well. I recommend it to you as well. It's another plugin which I'm going to explain in a future video. But just just remember, it's a plugin that is actually another level of security. I'll explain it more in detail later, perhaps. But basically, what it does is it's just another level of encryption that it puts it in here automatically. Another password. So notice when I click on this login, I believe I have it installed here. It's going to put a whole bunch of more of these little dots in here, which means it's inserting this encrypted password to further protect against hackers. Okay, so here we go. Login. 
See that? See all those little extra ones there? Okay. It's still, and then it reverts back to your own password. So it does log you in. Alrighty. So here we are at the dashboard. Right here it says dashboard. A little picture of a house there. This is kind of like the home, the home page, so to speak, for your WordPress administration area where you do everything. You build your whole uh, WordPress website and blog right here. So let's just take a little tour of this first. Up in here on the right, we have a little window and drop down. That basically, it's all about posts. I'll explain posts in a minute here. But uh, posts, and then it talks about draft and new page and things like that, all dealing with posts. And it gives you your, your name here of your website. Here's where you'll log out later. Now, there's a little bit of a help screen here. Let me click on that. And you should probably go ahead and read through this when you get a chance. Tells you some good little facts here, as well as where to get more information, documentation, and support forums. If you want to get in here and log into that, I believe you need to create a password, username, and password for that as well, so you can participate in the forums, ask questions, and and really get a lot of help from more experienced users of WordPress. Okay, so let me get back out of this. The way that you close this window, by the way, is you just go back to that help and shows a little arrow up there and click on that. And then you get over here to this window, which is screen options. Click on that and it drops down here showing you what basically you want to show on your dashboard on the screen here. Right now, you know, recent comments, all these things here, we'll look at them in a second down below. You don't have to show all these. In fact, sometimes there's even more than this to show. Uh, I can see here there's a few things missing. I'm not sure why, but anyways, come down here to screen layout and you've got the number of columns basically here, right in here. Here's one column and here's the second column. So you can show it in one column, two or three, four. It just depends on how much you've got going on down here. I usually leave that, I think it defaults to two. So that usually works pretty well. So I'm going to close this up by clicking on this up arrow. Okay. We get back to the dashboard. <clears throat> and here's the right now. What that means is what's happening right now. It gives you a quick snapshot. And right here, in other words, you've got this, this particular demo site doesn't have a lot of activity, <clears throat> but it does have two posts that have been written, five pages, one category, and that's a category of, of posts. I'll explain that in a minute. Tags, uh, no, no tags, zero tags. And a couple of comments in there. It also talks about, this is a discussion area, meaning the, that area of your blog that deals with the posts that you've written and comments you get back on and replies. And it allows you to approve things ahead of time, what's pending, and, and also the number of spam replies that may, may have been inserted in there by other people. Also gives you the current theme you're working on. I'll explain that in a minute. And some of the other widgets and tools. You can change the theme here as well. And pretty much that's the main thing you need to look at in this area. This is quick press. That just it means it's a quick way for you to publish a post and I normally don't use that and use I use the menu on the far left over here. And then we got recent drafts and some news from WordPress and so forth down here. Usually don't bother too much with this, just sort of news stuff. Okay. So basically what you're gonna want to do and learn is you come over here to the far left, these items here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and, and click on these to close them up. Okay. Supposed to be closing out there. Things are a little slow here, looks like, tonight. Close up the plugins. Basically, you, uh, you can expand or close any of these windows. So let's just start at the top up here. We got the dashboard. And then under the dashboard, we have updates. Whenever you see this update here, this number nine, or, or however many updates, there you go. You hover over it, and it tells you you got six plugin updates and three theme updates to do. 
I usually go ahead and click on that whenever I happen to get in here. And because you want to keep things up to date as well as the actual WordPress itself, that'll have updates occasionally too, like right here actually. And in my case, I had the latest version of WordPress. But if you d didn't have it, you could go ahead and click on it right here and install it automatically. And whenever you see that a new WordPress, you should probably go ahead and consider installing it, keep everything up to date. Same thing down here in the plugins, which I'm going to talk about in a minute here. Uh, what you do is if you want to update all of them, you can just click on this one box here. That selects all the plugins, and then you can click on Update Plugins. I'm not going to do it right now because it will take some time. It usually doesn't take much time, but I'll go ahead and avoid that uh, for right now. You click on the Update Plugins, and it just automatically updates all of these plugins, and that's also a good thing to do. And then down here as well, you got your themes, which I'll explain in a minute what a theme is briefly. And the same thing here, you can go ahead and update any and all of the themes that you may have loaded and uploaded here to your dashboard. Okay, so I'll go ahead and skip the actual update, but let's um, move on down here. There's a lot of things down here. Some of it you you, you will use more than others. Uh, this one here, Akismet Stats, is actually a plugin, and it's a, basically a very important plugin. You need to register on the website, and it's free or you can donate. A lot of the things in here, by the way, are where you can donate some money to help maintain this free WordPress platform. There's a lot of developers out there that are building all this, and they do it for free, mostly. So it helps to help you know, put in a few dollars here and help those developers continue to keep it open source, meaning open source means that it's open for anybody to use and make, make improvements and write their write your own programs for WordPress. But Akismet is one of the ones, basic ones that everyone uses to block spam on your site and that's a that's a great thing. So you'll want to load that up and I'll show you where that is in a minute. Then we get to posts down here and this is one of the main areas. If you click on posts here or you can click on the arrow. It, what it does is it opens up this selection of uh, menu items. It also opens up your main post page where it will list all of your posts that you've written. Again, I don't have that much written here because this is a demo site, but every one of these here you can hover over it. And I mean, I'm, I'm not going to go into too much detail on this for right now because we're going to actually do this later, but you can basically uh, change any of these right here and, and edit them or add new ones. So you can add a new one here, add a new post, and a post is something that you're going to write on an ongoing basis, adding new content as opposed to a page, which is sort of like a fixed amount of information in the page or sometimes called static information. You write it once and it's pretty much set. You might want to re review it and, and revise it from time to time, but a post is actually different in that you are adding new content, kind of like a traditional blogger would do. You're adding new blog posts on a regular basis, either daily, weekly, or whatever schedule you, you happen to be able to maintain. Categories, you're always going to write a new post in some kind of a category so that it can follow a very good navigation for your, both your readers, your human visitors, and the search engines. You can also uh, define different tags you're going to use, and we'll talk about that later. Media is basically, I'll click on here, basically it's your library of <clears throat> different media. Take a sip of water here. Okay, there we go. These are just some images I've loaded up before, so it has all your images in there, basically just like a library, and you can add new ones if you want to directly into the library. Links uh, are like links that you're going to put on your site here that link out to other websites, other blogs, other resources. 
and it comes by default. It comes with these right here, which you can keep them or not. I mean, they're all just WordPress default. I usually get rid of all of them. So again, click on this box, come up here, bulk actions, and delete, and then apply. And that'll get rid of all of them. Because you'll want to add your own right here. First, though, you need to add categories. And I'll probably explain this later, too. We're just going to go through this briefly right now. It's kind of a general tour, but these need a little bit, definitely, more ex explanation because they're real important as far as, well, both categories inside the posts and categories here. More in the post, actually, is more important in that it's going to be a key component of your search engine optimization strategies, which we're going to talk about a lot more later. Okay, we get down to pages. Again, very similar to this post. All the pages are listed. And you can edit any of these. If you want a new one, you click on it up here, Add New. Also, you can click over here, Add New. And then, I'll go ahead and do it real quick. I'm not going to go through the whole process right now, but this is where you'd add a new page. And then from here, you get right in there and add your title and your content, pictures, and so forth. But we'll go through this more detail later because that's real important. Continuing on down, you got comments. Those are your blog comments. We'll probably talk about that a little bit more later. Appearance. I click on that. Basically, that it talks about the appearance of your overall blog, meaning the themes. This is where you're going to look for a theme. We're going to cover that in the next video, actually, in detail. How you find a theme, how you upload it, activate it, configure it, all those good things. You can see here I've got a few. Let's see how many do I have? See a whole bunch of them here that I've loaded up just for demonstration purposes. This is the default one right here. But there's thousands of themes out there. So you find one that's very functional. This is a good one right here. Very customizable. And that fits. And here's the one the default. That's current. The current theme is this one right here. Happens to be a very good one as well. So we're going to talk more about what a widget is when we get into that building the site. Some of these other, these are actually some plugins. Editor, that's more for the people that know coding. Plugins are, let me see here, go ahead and click on that. And this, what this does is it lists all your plugins, description about them, and then basically how to activate them, deactivate them, and how to get the settings properly configured as well as sometimes here how to, where to visit the actual website that produced that plugin. And this is going to be a, a video later on, actually one of the later videos for this basic setup part of this membership site. We're going to talk a lot about plugins. As you can see here, we've got a lot of plugins. And these are kind of like the things that really drive the functionality and effectiveness of your website and blog. You can see here I've got a lot of them. See all these? And that's only page one. See, I've actually, in this case, I have 34 plugins. And some of these are just for demonstration purposes and experiment and to learn how to use them uh, because there's so many out there. And you have to use also the right ones. But we're going to talk about that a bit later. So let's keep moving here. We've got plugins. You can add new ones right here. And we'll talk about that later, of course. And these we're going to talk about later. You can set the users here, meaning administration, so forth, different subscriber levels, all different user levels. You can do that in here. And that's something that needs more, more time to explain as well. Let me click on Tools here. A lot of this you won't really be working with on a daily basis. OK, there's some little things in here. We'll probably talk about the tools later as well, different applications of that. Okay, sometimes when you load new plugins, they drop them in various places along here. And this happens to be one right here, which is a, a scans for, for hackers and things like that inside of your blog file management system. 
Now the settings is what we're going to actually cover in the very next video right after this one. We're going to cover this in detail, the settings, because that's that's the first step, because you've got you won't have all these plugins and everything loaded up in here as this one is showing, but you will have these first here, one, two, three, four, five, six. These first six links here will be here, and these are the settings that you need to configure before you start doing anything else as far as plugins go and all that. Or, or certainly before you do any writing, okay, and setting the structure of your, of your blog. Get this set up first, and that's what we're going to cover in the next video. And this one also has all the other plugins, or at least most of them listed in here, that are active. And this is where you can also configure each one of the plugins. Okay, sometimes the plugins they list down here. This is a plugin <coughs> for creating contact forms. And so that needs to be configured. Headers, that's another. These are part of the headers here. This is also a plugin. So sometimes it drops the plugins down here by themselves. These are plugins, plugins, plugins. This is a plugin, a database plugin. And the one at the very bottom, in this particular case, is a theme, the current theme, and that's the Fusion. And that one there is a very powerful and actually very complex free theme. We're going to cover that as well in, in the next, uh, I think, two videos from now, uh, how to select a theme and upload it and so forth. And this one here, we might even actually create a whole series of videos in the future on how to use this theme because it's quite complicated but very powerful. But once you learn how to use it, it's, it's you know, not that difficult. Okay, just uh, so many different options and settings with it. It's pretty, pretty uh, powerful. So anyways, that's kind of a tour here. Let's see, we're down at the bottom. So that's pretty much all I really wanted to do for this video. It's getting kind of long here anyways. Um, and we didn't actually go through and configure anything. Uh, right in here is actually, you see this is the general settings up here. And this is what we're going to do on the next video. Is start in here, because you need to do this. You're ready to do it now. Actually go in here and get the correct settings according to where you live in the country and so forth and what you how you want yours configured. Okay, so that's it for now. Let me stop here. This is getting a little bit long, and I like to keep these videos nice and short so that you can focus and get them done in nice little blocks of time. Okay, so we'll see you on the next video, and we'll get working on the settings. This is Joe Jacobson with Step-by-Step -step Blogging.